thanks very much for inviting me to this meeting. It's, it's really a privilege um, to be here and uh, especially to have heard Matt's account from inside the plant of, of what has been a very exciting and important development and important occupation, I think. Um, of course, Karl Marx was there for, for different reasons. He had health problems. He wasn't really there on holiday. But uh, I think there's a link, and we're beginning to see it uh, coming into fruition now. Because, I mean, there's no doubt that the closure of Britain's only major wind turbine factory at exactly the moment that the government is promising to create hundreds of thousands of green jobs and drive through a massive expansion of renewable energy is nothing but a national scandal. If the government's serious about a transition to a green, low-carbon economy, it has to intervene now to ensure production resumes at Vestas, and if necessary, under public ownership and control. And the fact that the workforce has now occupied the plant can and should be an inspiration to other workers, the wider environmental movement, and can, I think, now propel this issue to the heart of national politics. Because, I mean, of course, the, the occupation and resistance to the closure of two factories and the loss of 600,000 or more jobs would be important and worthy of support whether it was making essential equipment essential to combating climate change or not. Because, after all, as a result of the tr crisis triggered by the banking crash of last autumn, hundreds of thousands of jobs are being lost every month in Britain. Unemployment is rising by close to 100,000 uh, every month. And it's only, as Chris was saying, if threatened workforces are prepared to take action to defend themselves and their livelihoods, that the balance of costs for the employers, for the government, both industrial and political, really is going to begin to shift in this crisis. Because we're now beginning to see a really significant uh, workplace occupation movement in Britain and Ireland over the last few months. Because Vestas, as I think has already been said, is the fourth occupation this year, following, first of all, Waterford Crystal, Prismy Packaging, and of course, most significantly, the Vistian occupation in Belfast, Basildon, and Enfield, which all of which achieved significant results in terms of payoffs uh, or jobs for those workers who took, who took part. And across the world, this occupation movement against the crisis and the impact of the crisis on employment, jobs, closures, has taken off in, in a similarly, and in fact, much bigger scale uh, with occupations from Turkey to Argentina, from South Korea to Serbia. They're all going on. You may not be reading about them, but they're happening now. I mean, of course, some of us have heard about the, uh, some people have heard about the boss snappings that have been taking place in factories, earmarked for closure in France, where the boss is locked up in the management offices until they start to actually deal seriously with the threatened workforce. It's now gone further in the last few days, and they've been threatening to blow up some of the equipment in the factories uh, to get a result. Um, now, in the United States itself, uh, last December, at the beginning of this crisis, when the, when the jobs hemorrhage was really beginning to flow, there was a very significant occupation, although it's a small scale one in a way like Vestas, but very significant politically, I think, when the Republic Windows and Doors factory was occupied and won the support of Barack Obama uh, in the immediate aftermath of his election. And, and in South Korea this week, the Sangyang uh, <coughs> car factory, which there, there are 700 workers uh, who have barricaded themselves in the paint shop, I think it is, <coughs> for the last two months. There was an attempt by thousands of riot police to force them out, and the riot police were bringing an eviction order from the courts, and they were hurled back by a barrage of, uh, of nuts and bolts from the <laughs> occupied workers <laughs> who are continuing to occupy that factory. Now, I'm not suggesting the investors work should go down that road. Well, <laughs> and, and, and of course, the Vestas occupation is not on that um, scale. But the workforce, I think, has taken a remarkably brave stand in what is a non-unionized uh, plant with a bullying management of a foreign-based multinational company in, what, in an area which, no offense to the Isle of Wight, but is not famed 
uh, Karl Marx notwithstanding, <laughs> or its militants. Uh, but already, I think, it's caught the imagination of people across the country. Uh, because this dispute and this occupation brings together a whole set, set of crucial issues that concern us all as the crisis carves its way through economic and social life across the world. The first one is the one I mentioned, that the crisis of jobs and unemployment, because this occupation is challenging that head on. The loss of skills and livelihoods that goes with you know, mass unemployment that we've seen in the past in this country many times that has come back to haunt us and the misery that brings. Secondly, the occupation at Vestas and in the other occupations I've mentioned highlights the issue of ownership, ownership of economic enterprises and industry and plant and production and services. And who decides how those companies are run and in whose interests they're run. Thirdly, it brings to a head and into focus the issue of corporate uh, globalization and the absurdity of a Danish-run multinational company closing vital production plant and facilities and moving that, equip that production to the US entirely regardless of the needs of this country or the need to combat climate change uh, across the, uh, the world. 